Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trusty Huckster's Vintage Deep Dive. Uh, tonight, I've got Joni from Vintageris, and we are covering uh, cigarette cards, tea cards, some of the tradable trade cards from early in the 20th century. I'm trying to do double duty following my phone because I'm also trying to win an eBay auction that ends in 12 seconds. So pardon me while I'm slightly, uh, slightly distracted if I'm going to get this. Um, but I'm really excited to do this one uh, because I've been doing, uh, been collecting cigarette cards myself for a couple of very specific collections and trying to do some research, trying to figure it out, but really didn't ever come across a lot of people that knew anything about them. And I won! Woohoo! Okay, sorry. Um, oh, <laughs> I, won. Yay. I just won a Civil War era huckster token. Believe it or not, there is such a thing. And the last one went for over $300. So I was really trying to get this one and I did. So I'm super excited. Anyway, that's not why I, I will do a, I will do a, a video on my Huckster collection at some point as well. Maybe when this piece comes in, but for now we're doing cigarette cards and uh, last fall, when it would have been, yeah, in November, uh, I was doing a, the fundraiser, which some of you may be familiar with. I was doing the fundraiser right. for just one more dachshund rescue. And Joni donated a set of these cigarette cards. I'm like, oh, somebody else knows what they are. So <laughs> we talking a little bit about them. We sold them. We priced them. We sold them. It was one of the most popular items or brought in some of the most, the biggest money for that fundraiser and uh, was super excited to have them available. And so then talked to Joni a little bit. She sells them on her channel. Uh, so we just said, you know what? Why don't we do a deep dive? So we finally are doing the deep first deep dive of 2021. We're going to do it on cigarette cards. So welcome, yeah. Joni. Thank you so Thank much you. Uh, for joining. We've got uh, quite a few people who've already joined into the chat. We've got Laura from Be Most Mercantile joining us from Oklahoma. So hopefully you're not at the uh, the pool hall tonight, Laura. So hopefully you focus on uh, doing some deep dives. Laura has actually done two deep dives with me. She yes. did one on dominoes and then another one on playing cards. And the dominoes one actually ended up being one of my most popular. Uh, oh, wow. Kim, joining us. Kim Zapp is joining in. Diana from Little Vintage Me. Hey, Diana. Linda coming in. Katie from Florida, Vintage and Vinyl. Thanks so much for joining us, Katie. Uh, we've got Chad the sh from Retro sh from Shop Retro Days. We've got Brian coming in from the Chicago suburbs. I got Julie, another Canadian. Uh, hey. <laughs> Julie and uh, Joni running, yeah. representing the great uh, country. Of Canada. Uh, <laughs> so appreciate everyone joining in. Uh, the deep dives are great. If you've never joined one before, uh, this is a live interview. It is not a sale. Uh, although we may each be talking about things that we will be selling or are currently selling, but that is not um, what we're doing. My sales are on Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern. Joni, when are your sales? Uh, 6 p.m. I, I always say uh, 6 p.m. Pacific or 9 Eastern on Tuesday nights. Excellent. On Tuesday. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, you've got, got your evenings mm -hmm. covered. You can join us for sales. So tonight is not going to be a sale, uh, but it is a live event. So for those of you who are uh, joining in the chat, uh, welcome Steve from Brick House Salvage. Thanks for joining in. And Nancy from This Overstuffed House. Nancy does her sales after mine on Thursdays. Um, the uh, It is a live chat. So as we cover different information, feel free to ask yeah. questions or just hang out, be a huckster heckler, uh, we are more the merrier. Uh, but the, what we have discovered with my deep dives is although they can be well attended for the live interview, when they, what I had always intended for these to do is sit out on my channel. Uh, they're in their own playlist uh, under a deep dive playlist uh, for all the different topics so that people can reference them when they're looking for this information. Right. And I will say I have gone back and rewatched some of my own deep dives where after I've gone shopping or I find something on eBay and I'm like, okay, wait a minute, what was that that I was supposed to be watching for? Uh, I've got, you know, Katie from Vintage and Vinyl. She did a great one in albums. I'm still mm -hmm. trying to master that because I was baffled through half of that presentation uh, because it's just an area that I knew nothing about. So they hopefully everyone enjoys these because it's just like an, I find a oh, yeah. fun way to introduce topics you know you may never go out yeah. and collect these but what's going to be fun about tonight uh for this topic uh hey trisha uh what's fun about this topic is they can be inexpensive they can also be very expensive but they can be inexpensive <laughs> and they can be a fun 
uh, item to kind of start collecting and start building a collection without a huge investment. So That's we will right. definitely talk a little bit about that, a little bit about the eras. I colloquially referred to this entire event. Uh, we're going to be talking about cigarette cards, but we're definitely covering beyond that. And I have a decent collection in a couple different areas. Joni has far, uh, far better variety. So hopefully we'll get a little bit of coverage. And what you might find is the how I got into them. You might find an area you like, and then you find, oh my God, there's a, there are actually cigarette cards in that theme. And so mm -hmm. you start collecting them. And then all of a sudden you just, you start building these weird collections. So uh, thank you right. to everyone. Hopefully I caught everyone and said hi to everyone. Uh, but uh, so again, I've got Joni from Vintageous. So I'm going to uh, pass over. You know, you'll go and introduce yourself, where you're at, what your background sure. is in reselling, and uh, we'll kind of get started. Okay. Uh, sure. So my name is Joni. My uh, channel on YouTube is Vintageous, uh, Vintage Glass in China. Although I do do more than just Vintage Glass in China. That was sort of where I started off, and YouTube won't let me change my name. So. Uh, that's where we go. Uh, um, and yeah, as Patrick said, my sales are on Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific. I am an experienced reseller. So I started off on Etsy um, selling just glass and then expanded into China. And gradually I'm now moving into other areas as well. And the ephemera is one of the big ones that I really want to get more into because uh, I've always adored it. And so when I saw a lot of... Uh, of um, cigarette cards at an auction, I bid on it aggressively because I knew I knew I knew that as much that they were valuable, um, and that in the auction it's almost one of those things where you see a box and it's open and you have no idea how if it's complete sets or what and how what the you know condition was like. So it was a big risk for me, but. I am so glad I did it because I ended up with an amazing collection of uh, 1920s, you know, uh, cigarette cards. So, uh, yeah, so that's kind of how it's the ball started rolling a few months ago when I first bought that lot. And then since then, I've been adding to it um, because I, I think they're beautiful. They're they're And as you said, Patrick, it's a great entry level collectible for people who a have little space because it doesn't take up space. You can keep your collection in a binder if you want. Um you know, and and as you say, you can start off with cards that are a dollar a piece or two dollars a piece. You can work your way up to some of the sets where they're, you know, 20 bucks a piece, 30 bucks a piece, but or more. Right. <laughs> so Absolutely. We can talk about that, too, about what the most expensive card went for, because I looked that up. <laughs> I was curious. Excellent. We'll build up to that. Now, you said you started when you saw or you saw the uh, mixed lot that had some in there and you knew that they had value to them. What was your first introduction to cigarette cards? Was you must have known a little bit about them before that because you would you knew that there was just that they weren't just you know straps of paper that weren't going to have any value. So when did you first come okay. across them? Yeah, I guess it was a few years ago when I was kind of like looking into ephemera that could be resold and um, you know going out to antique malls and. Um, you know, flea markets and things like that, where they more the flea markets that were specialized in vintage, where you know there would be booths of cigarette or trading card right um, sellers, and so they would have these cigarette cards. And because I have always loved, you know, that era of the in the night early 1900s to 1920, 1930 the graphics draw, drew me in. So I'd say it was probably about five years ago that I first saw them in a um, one of those vintage, like festival kind of flea market. They called it a flea market, but it was, you know, all really nice vintage booths. Um, and it was there that I, I saw them for the first time and saw, saw some of the price tags and went, hmm, <laughs> I gotta keep my eye out for, the, for those, right? Admittedly, but, you know, what when I had, when I had started, I think I found them kind of in reverse. Oh. I found them because of the subject matter. So I oh, think what I had done was I had had uh, I don't I honestly don't one hundred percent remember, but it was either an eBay or an Etsy uh, saved search that mm -hmm. might have swept it together, or I just oh. was like, scrolling because I collect pottery and porcelain. I came across the first sets of pottery and porcelain cards. 
And I'm like, what are these? Yeah, I have no right. idea that these existed. So I may have seen them at a flea market. I may have seen them at, at, at you know ephemera shows, things, but not really paid much attention to them because in some cases they're the they're such myriad subject matter that oh, okay. depending on the subject matter, I would I just skip over it because it's just not something I would have been interested in. But this suddenly landed, and I was trying to figure out the first piece. And I don't remember the first piece, but I do remember the first, it, this is the first series. Um, so these right. are cigarette cards from their chairman cigarettes from RJ. Okay. And so what I didn't realize at the time, you know, I wasn't hundred percent sure what the era of these were. I've done, you know, some research since then. Um, this is the, they did these in multiple series. This is the second series I happened to pick up, um, but they each have, an individual piece of pottery or porcelain, you know, right in the front, which is just, this right. is really my jam. And the idea that these were in cigarette packets, I found absolutely fascinating. I'm like, why on earth would, you know, because at that time this would have been in the teens, you would think that the predominant smoker was male, you know, that they would care about mm. pottery and porcelain. And then I started doing some of the research and realized, or I started thinking about it, you know, books didn't have pictures back then. There weren't reference books back then. Like in some ways, this was how people learned about the world. You know, they just, and they developed this and then they had so many different series. So I have several sets that I've developed because of pottery and porcelain, but mm -hmm. then depending on how I got them, sometimes they're in lots. Sometimes, you know, I get them as a mixed bag. I then have all these other cards that I don't even know what to do with. So I'll probably end up be selling them. But, uh, you know, just kind of learning mm -hmm. that there, are, there are beyond cigarette cards. There's, I, had, I have a huge number of tea cards, which mm -hmm. I didn't know was a thing. Um, so mm -hmm. we'll all those different things. So when you first started building your collection, either for yourself or for reselling, did right. you follow a brand? Did you follow a theme? How did you kind of pick where, where, cause this, you can go deep in this deep dive. Oh, uh, where did you kind of go? Well, I mean, to be honest, it's it's where where I could find them because they don't come across, you know, in auctions and so on very often, I find. Um, and so it was more about finding ones that I felt had a subject matter that would resell well, right? So, uh, for example, the last lot that I brought, bought was um, silks, cigarette silks. So we'll talk a little bit about those and I'll show you some of those later. Um, so it's not a card, but it's on an actual piece of fabric. But um, and that's because they're just beautiful. They're floral and flags and they're just gorgeous. So I just I think more it's around. Do I think this subject matter is something that people would enjoy? Um, because, you know, the really expensive ones are the sports ones and the things that are um, out of my league. <laughs> Pardon the pun. But <laughs> But out of my league because I I'm not into sports so you know I wouldn't I wouldn't even be able to begin to try to sell the sports related ones and so I think for me it would always be ones that I just find pretty and attractive. That's as fantastic. As that <laughs> now, when you were adding them to your collection, were you did you buy them as complete sets or were you buying them loosely or randomly and trying to accumulate sets? That's a great question. Both. Um, so I bought off of collectors. I've bought um, just, uh, you know, as, as well, there's some of them are full sets and some of them are, you know, parts of sets, I would say. So, you know, yeah, it's just a, a mixed bag, whatever I could, could, could find. Cause again, they're from the twenties, right? So it, they're not as frequent on the market as some other collectibles or antiques. And that was one of the things I was going to ask is from the ones that you've built up. Sorry, we might be getting a little bit of feedback. Um, but from the ones that we built up, let me lower my speaker a little bit. Um, what is the oldest ones that, you, that, that you're aware of? What are the oldest ones that you've put into the collection? Because I yeah. do have some pre-World War I cards based on the research I've done. Um, so like, what were, the, what were the earliest ones that you brought in? I think 1912 is the earliest ones. Let me just double check, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah, I have some British um, fries cocoa ones. Uh, let me grab them. Yeah, so some of the ones that I have aren't just tobacco. They're actually, um, 
you know, this the, this fries cocoa ones are um, for chocolate and you know cocoa powder, I believe, is where they. You know, I can't can't find them when I want them here. There. I don't think I have any chocolate. Any cocoa ones. I've got some oh. weird. I've got some different outside of cigarettes, but I don't think I've got any chocolate or candy. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, these are neat. So they're um, um, a Scout series. Um, well, that's the very first one, but it's kind of in rough shape. But uh, yeah, they're they're really neat because they're um, Boy Scouts. So there's the back of them, and they date to 1912. And what I like about them, look at the, what it says on the bottom there. So. You know, makers to the majesty, the king. <laughs> you know, That's we usually say that to the, to the queen, right? But yeah, so this is a whole set of, it's all, it's, it's, well, it's, it's, I'm calling it complete because um, there's four that are kind of on the rougher side, like that first one that I showed, it's, it's a little bit on the rough side. Um and then there's one card. The one of the cards is from the second series, not the first. And this is the first series. Yeah, little vind uh, this overstuff house. I always think of you when I look at these because <laughs> I, I know just ordered. Um, I just ordered the special binders because some of the ones I showed, I'll show you came with the sleeves, and I'm like, wait a minute, this is a weird shaped sleeve. What is this? And because most of them are British that I've that I've discovered, most of them have, are British. I don't think I found any American, uh, some mm -hmm. German, some Bulgarian. Um, but they have different. They've got a special photo album that holds them. So I just ordered a uh, photo album, and it was not. They are expensive, just as you said, Nancy. But I think it's going to be worth it because I love this collection, and I'm trying to finish it. Now you're talking about a complete series. So for those who maybe this is relatively mm -hmm. new, I'm not familiar with the cocoa ones. Do they number them on the back? Yeah, so these ones, so yeah, so sets what I've, I've found um, is they come in sets of usually 25, something even 24 to 50 is a common amount. And then a hundred is the sort of bigger sets. Um, this one here is 50 in the series. And so it's, you know, a stack of, of 50 of them that were quite well loved, I would say. They've obviously been played with. So somebody, Excellent. you know, somebody loved them. And what I love about cigarette cards, and I'll just show you one that's in a bit, a bit better shape here, the last one, is they always have, usually have anyway, a good description on the back that's quite educational. Yeah. So it's not just the, you know, the graphics. Um, in fact, some of my cards have... A uh, school board printed, you know, property out of this and such school, which I thought was kind of fun. So obviously, you know, they considered that part of their library, I guess, in the school library. So that's kind well, of again, if we go back to some of the research of one of the books that I'd found, and it just kind of put it in very simplistic terms that when you're yeah. back in the teens and the twenties, you know, depression or not, you know, in the twenties, you just didn't have photos or colored photos available in even newspapers or certainly not in classroom books. So right. in some cases, like I've got a couple museum uh, series that this would be the only way somebody would be able to see something from the museum. Now you've, your collection is a, is a, a you've got a year on me. Um, so mine, these are from 1913. So this is happens oh, to wow. be a series that I'm building um, is, for, oh, is the oldest series that I have. So this one, uh, I do not have a complete set yet. So these are ones I'm trying to build over time. I just bought five more last week that cost me $35 and I'm buying six more. I just bought six more today that cost me another 30 or $32. So these are falling in that, you know, four to $6 each range, but it's the same thing. So like this one is the first series. So this one had 50. So it's the first series and the same thing. It's got all that information on the back, which, you know, where else would you learn about Swansea porcelain? So you've got all of these individual pieces. So that's the first series. And then when you moved into the second series, it actually says that on the back that you're in the second series. So this is another 50. So that was one to 50. This is 51 to 100. I have four series that I've been trying to build and as I've been building them, I just discovered there's a fifth series that I didn't have any in. So I'm going to try and finish these first. <laughs> it's right, right. expensive to try and finish these. Um, but I absolutely love those. And what I like about them, you know, they're in color. They're, you know, illustrated. They're absolutely beautiful. Those are older. 
than these. And so this is the museum series that I got. And this is that binder paper that I was talking about. So it's a, a Glenn two ring binder for those uh, uh, Anglophiles. Um, mm. So you've got the two hole punch. So it's going to be a wide um, binder that comes in a, it comes in a protective sleeve. So I'm super excited. Um, but anyway, so these were from 1924, no, 27. So these are also cigarette cards from 27, but these are all in black and white. So it's like, even though these were 10 years later, these were being put out in uh, black and white. Now, this is something I wanted to ask you about because I haven't found this. Do you have any like this, Joni, that have the two holes in no. the sides? No, I don't. The only set I have that have those holes. Interesting, yeah. Um, I, did, I did find, I think uh, either Diana or Nancy was talking about it. In some cases, the companies issued folders and I did find there's a oh. folder for that museum series that also has two holes. So I don't oh, know if you were supposed to like tie them in or like do a little brad or something to hold it in there. Often that was like a peg that you screwed together, almost oh, like. Okay. Do you ever seen those where they're like, yeah, you unscrew it and these? I bet you that's what it was. I think like ledgers and stuff. So yeah, I didn't even think yeah. of that. So that might yeah. be the case. So that's the only one that I have that has that. Okay. Um, but and I thought also it's the only one. Uh, I actually have a couple others, but it's the only, it's, I don't have a lot that are only in black and white. Are most of yours color or do you have a lot in black and white? All, all uh, color, all full color. And that's the thing that amazed me, you know, as you were saying earlier about how, you know, it, that's very uh, odd to have full color printing Absolutely. <laughs> you know, back in that day. I saw a question from, I think it was, um, this overstuffed house, Nancy. Um, I, I think you asked me, Nancy, why the cards I was showing, the, the scout cards, who made them? So it's Fry's Coco. Uh, this is series one, Fry's Coco. Uh, Fry's Pure, Fry's Pure Chocolate Cocoa. Cocoa and Chocolate, sorry. Yeah, so they're really cool, really different. Yeah, the Herder Fry, mine were RJ Lee cigarettes so she's got the cocoa ones are older the cigarette ones so those are 1913 1914. i was going to show uh, the other thing that i had that was black and white which i thought was really cool is these from senior service cigarettes mm. they are actual photographs and you can see there's a oh, there's a glare on them because they've actually been processed as if they were photos and this is from the beautiful scotland series oh, and yeah. that's what they are they're black and white but it's because it's black and white photography so i don't know if these were more expensive at the time because photography was around but i don't know how they normally issued them um so we had, I had several of those from the senior cigarettes that are all in black and white you know just some cool Scotland, you know. And are they but, about three and a half by say two and a bit? These are a little bit bigger than the cigarette, the cigarette one. So the yeah, the, the regular size you can see is kind of fitting in. So definitely a little bit larger. And then there was right. another series which was done by Cavenders, which I think is also cigarettes. This one, these have been colorized, but they're actually from the camera study series. Mm -hmm. So they're hand colored real photos. So they started with black and white photos and then they colorized them. So this one doesn't have as much of a glare, but it's got that Wallace nutting kind of hand tinting to mm, them. So yeah. those, those were the black and white ones that I had, which I thought were kind of cool. Um, and I haven't figured out like seniors, they are cigarettes, um, which I think most of the cigarette ones were like pre-World War One and a little bit after World War One. But right. I didn't find as many after World War Two. No, because they stopped producing them because there was a paper shortage and they and during the war. And so they stopped. Most of them stopped in like in, in North America in 1925 ish, 28. Um, and then it wasn't, in, you know, in Europe, they went a bit further. You're you're making me think of this series that I have. Um, that's uh, another sort of that same size. And it's on like flimsier kind of weight paper this is birds of canada it's an imperial tobacco company just a gorgeous gorgeous series of birds um and it's a it's a large set it's a hundred in the series 
So I got to so make one series that has all 100 or is it multiple series that add up to 100? No, it's one series of 100. Wow. And, and I have the complete set. So that's it's amazing that I have the complete set, but they're just like, oh my gosh, just stunning. Oh, wow. You know, they're just, let me show, try and find a really cool one here. Uh, they're just, I just love them. Like, yeah, if you're a bird lover, <laughs> you know, it's these, these ones are really neat. And because they're quite a bit bigger, right? So they, these are three by, I think I said three by two and a three quarters, something like that. So they're, you know, much more substantial. They look, you know, really great framed. And I was going to give people a tip too that, I mean, you showed your fancy um, card um, holder, right? Mm -hmm. The one that was designed for that. But the other thing you can do is you can put it in um, business card holder uh, pages. And you can get those at the dollar store even, you know, if you if you want to have something cheaper, you know, to keep them in. Um, I've often used um, the business card holders as well. And it's great to have them in the, in the pages like that because you can see them, you know, because they are designed to be a series. I was really in, uh, looking at doing the, um, I can't remember what they're called, but you do them for baseball cards and stuff that I think they're called top loaders. Yes, where yeah. They're pretty rigid and yeah. then you slide them in the top. And so the idea is you can then handle it without, you know, messing up the card. Without but down. You end up with the, their boxes for them, but then you end up, they're just kind of all stacked. And I just can't imagine sitting there one at a time, you know, trying mm -hmm. to, I do like the idea of the sleeves. Like this, this sleeve is another, it's the same style. It's for the same, that same Glen, but this is going into that larger size as well. I think closer to what you're talking about. Um, and like similar to the photographs that this is probably of the ones that I have, this is probably the most valuable set because I do have the complete set. And I think I, I'm seeing it on eBay right now, listing for around 80 to hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. um, so it's only 25 cards. So that as you know, by individual, it's still only like four bucks a card. And that's one of the weird things I've discovered with sets is like, it's super, super cheap to do like the random lot. Like those times, sometimes you can get them for an average of like 50 cents or less. Then you can get, you know, but if you do yeah. in like, oh, I'm listing one card out of this set, that's when you have to start paying seven or eight dollars <laughs> or more because the, either they were less available or whatever the case was, that one is not available. And this is one of the weird things that I had seen. So I have of that series that I started with, I have four series and we look at them. So this was series number one. This is series number two. And then series number three and number four are like triple hmm. this size, like double this. For some reason, series number two, I can't find as many mm -hmm. cards. And the cards that I'm picking out of these, these are the most expensive ones. So it's one of those that it's like, I don't know if they didn't issue as many or the, the time of year it came I out that, that, like, yeah. right before World War One, like maybe there was some issue that I haven't found enough detail on that specific series to know, you know, why that is. Um, but then sometimes I, there's a couple right. sets that I could buy the entire set, but I already have more than half the set. So I don't want to buy the whole set again. And it's kind of more fun to build it over time to a certain right. extent. So that's, that's kind of what I'm over trying time. to do. Yeah. Sure. So just, yeah. I like to give you a sense of cost too. this bird, this bird one that I showed, um, I'm probably looking for about 350 for it, for this wow. hundred card, you know, yeah, I've never ones. seen the bird ones. It's, That's also the first ones I've seen that are not British or or at least European. Mm -hmm. Um, so are were they yeah. common in in Canada or like you know, you're kind of like well, common ish. Common ish, okay. Because do you because we're smaller the same oh. do you share the same manufacturers as England? Like do you have the same companies? No, it would be more often that we would be more with the American uh, printing houses, okay. right? Um, so, for example, I, I know one of the, the companies that I have quite a few cards, Imperial Tobacco, uh, was bought out or was a subsidiary, I think, of American 
tobacco and you know there's a lot there was a lot of mergers and trades and all this it's quite a complicated um, company history but um, no we're we typically in Canada um, would go f- first to the U.S. if we're going to you know look at printing houses so but I think it's just because our population is smaller you know they would have done smaller print runs and so the cards tend to be quite valuable um, the other ones that I wanted to show that I think are kind of neat is these ones that actually if you look I'm going to hold it up really close because can you tell that around the bird, it's actually like cut out? <laughs> you can see it better, I think, on the back there. So I was like, when I first got the, the first lot of, of these cards, I saw all these like loose animals. I think I actually have some of them loose here. Yeah, let me hang, show, show that too. Because I was like, what are all these like little animals? And it turned out that it was, you know, they had fallen out of some of the cards. So I guess kids were encouraged to, you know, print them out or punch them out. So again, to find the, the you know, the series where the animals aren't missing <laughs> is another thing too, right? Um, sometimes you just find the animals. That and is the, absolutely fantastic. Now, what kind of cards were those? Please tell me they weren't cigarette cards. They were cigarette cards, <laughs> yes. Corrupting <laughs> the youth of Canada. Well, and that's the thing. They, they, uh, from my research, what they said is that that is one of the reasons they stopped producing cigarette cards was because, you know, of the con- conflict of, you know, kids wanting, <laughs> you know, c- kids associated with c- cigarettes and, you know, encouraging dad to smoke <laughs> or mom to smoke, I guess. But, but mom, mom didn't smoke overtly, I would think, those days, right? But I just think they're really neat, the ones no, that have. I've never <laughs> seen those. That is so cool. I'll be on the lookout for those. Now, is that a British company or is that Canadian? No, oh, that's it's Canadian British too. Art, okay. But it's Canadian. It's, again, the Imperial Tobacco Company. That is so, fantastic. Yeah. Now, Katie's got a question coming in from the hecklers. So, and so she were talking about the way, like I said, my second series for whatever reason I had less. And this is something I've not come across. I can't say I've actually hundred percent researched it, but mm-hmm. I just assumed if you're printing 50, you know, 50 in a series that all 50 would be produced at the same rate. But do you know, mm-hmm. did they purposely make some less comments but just to make you buy more cigarettes because damn it i need number three you know do you know if they did that because i don't know that for sure i'm pretty sure that's true i know for sure in this from the sports cards um you know because it was a celebrity or somebody like that they would have to have you know their legal permission in order to print the card and get their you know sponsorship really isn't it um in order to do it so anything with someone famous on it because there's there's a series that have actresses and you know as well they really needed that um you know that buy-in in fact if the most expensive card right you probably saw this in your research too patrick but what let me just find it here but it was uh it's really interesting that the most expensive card was Onus wagner um from a- allen and and ginter tobacco u.s was a baseball card in the, from the early 1900s. In 2016, sold for $3.12 million. And that's because Wagner was a non-smoker and he did not want his name associated with the cigarette cards. And so he started sort of legal threats and, you know, try to tried to tell them that they couldn't print it. So I think only about 200 cards got out from that. And so, uh, you know, he wasn't he wasn't really keen on it. So they wouldn't have, you know, produced a mass amount of, of those cards because of that whole legal challenge. So I think there's there's a few things. So, yes, printing, you know, printing series running out of paper towards the war is a big one that would have limited, you know, what they could do. And some of the things like the silks, for example, they were really expensive to produce. So again it would be you know shortage of inks and all sorts of things i would think even the metal plates i would imagine as well so i just ordered literally i just ordered my first silks today because i didn't know they existed i oh. 
they I wasn't familiar with them. I think I'd heard the term of like cigar silks and things like that, but I didn't know they fell into the same category. So you were talking about it and prepping for this talk that I'm yeah. like, I, what is she talking about? So when I discovered them, what I actually discovered is this series, the one I keep referring to, they actually have silks made oh. with the same designs. So it's, I, from what I can tell, they're not as, it, they didn't do the entire, I, I've got 200 in the series. They didn't do the entire series, but they, no. and they're not numbered, but they're, you know, some of the same, the Dresden porcelain, the, you know, some of the same. Oh. So I just grabbed, a, I, mean, I ordered a few of those. They'll be my first silks because I never even knew such a thing existed. So oh, cool. thanks for the tip on that. There's a question that's come up uh, from okay. Lisa. And I think, you know, this is a good segue to talking about, you know, some of the, you know, de the development as we're going through time. Um, you had mentioned that really, and I kind of found the same thing in the research that really around World War II, the cigarette cards themselves pretty much stopped producing yeah. them. That there are yeah. a couple of attempts to recycle, recycle and some old issues, designs were reissued. Some designs that were supposed to come out during the war came out later, but it was like not nearly as common, but what became more common is the cards from foods and things like that, which is why I find mm. that your chocolate cards were so early. Mm. Um, so I have a ton of tea cards. They're oh. Brook Bond tea. Um, so I've got like this flower, this flower pattern. And as I was researching all of these, pretty much everything that I found, these were coming out after World War II. So mm. they were like almost all in the 50s and the 60s. I did actually have the latest collection I had was from Doncella. And I don't remember, I can't remember if I looked this up. I don't remember what Doncella sold, if it said that. Mm. But you can see there is the coupon offer that expired in 1983. So they were doing these, you know, as late as into the early 80s. Um, they were still making cards. So Lisa's question is how does the value of these compare? Uh, you know, cigarette versus tea. I think part of it ends up being the age, you know, mm -hmm. like my por pottery and porcelain ones, those cards are now literally over a hundred years old. They are more expensive. The tea ones, I will admit, I got a little bit cheaper. Yeah. Um, are you, it, is, what do you find on the values of these? I, yeah. Um, so a couple of things on that. So I have some that were produced in the sixties as well. These are Nabisco uh, cereal cards. Um, so it's, the untamed, untamed animals, nature untamed. Um, so, you know, these are, these are the, the newest cards that I have. And yes, I think some of the, you know, cereal cards and things like that, the tea cards were produced in quite a large, much larger volume. So the more they're produced, it's like anything vintage, right? The more they make, the, the less the value. So these, these ones are $2 each, you know, like that I'm be selling these for $2 each. Can I show the silks too? Because I think they're kind of neat. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So the cigarette silks. So same concept as the cigarette cards, but on silk. Or and sometimes it's silk blend, um, not necessarily 100% silk. And then these ones are numbered. So you can see a tiny little number. That one says 11. Um, and what they were used for what they were promoted to be used for was quilting uh quilting so so women made things like throw cushions and and quilts um you know, you know um table covers purses even um with them and uh so it's really really neat so if you find like a really really old quilt that has you know, this printed little square, little rectangle, it, it may very well be a cigarette silk. Um, so I have flower, floral ones, and I also have some ones that are um, flags. Let me show you the flag one here too. As, uh, or these are actually, no, these ones are metal. I've got flags, sorry, and then I've got, I guess that I would call these commemorative metals so you know and this one says oak crown luxembourg so um you know sort of warm warm um metals and then yeah i've got flag ones oh i forgot to grab the flag ones they're in the binder but yeah so it's kind of different right and and something something uh you know a little bit uh 
I just find it interesting. I would be interesting to see, you know, I saw some pictures of quilts and so on, and you can Google it and see them because they're, they're quite neat to see, right? These, all these patches of, of the silks. So. Absolutely. I've, I've heard of uh, cigar silks being sewn into quilts, but I, I actually am not familiar. Uh, my ex-wife and I used to own a quilt store for 10 years. And so okay. we saw a lot of antique, but I don't remember ever seeing something like that. Right. Now, what are you seeing on the values of things like the silks? Are those more rare? Or are they, what kind of values do those go for? Yeah, <laughs> I am seeing a lot higher prices. Um, you know, I haven't been able to find, well, I haven't done a research on these, these metals yet, but I know some of the floral ones, you know, 30 bucks even for wow. each, each okay. one. But the ones are, that I bought were related to the old pottery and porcelain, the Lee series. And I paid about twice as much for the silks than I paid for the card, which I thought was reasonable. Right. Um, and I just grabbed five, you know, just to have a, a little bit of a variety. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I didn't, I really didn't find them out there all that much. So that was yeah, just kind of a yeah. fun little bonus find because you had mentioned them. Now, one of the questions moving back into the cards, a question that came in from Day Trip Vintage, and I actually don't know the answer to this. You know, I think colloquially, I am always referring to them as cigarette cards. Yeah. Doing research, I find them a lot of times they're referred to as tobacco cards. Yeah. But as you move into post-World War II, is there a colloquial term for these? Are they just trade cards, trading cards, or? The, the, the phrase that I've always seen is tobacco insert collectibles. Hmm. Okay. So they kind of use that phrase. I've, that's the one I've seen the most. Um, meaning that it's anything <laughs> that they inserted, I guess, into tobacco products. But certainly, you know, when you get out in the realm of candy and other things, because I have a lot of chocolate and candy cards too, um, uh, they tend to be um, called trading cards more. You see them called trading cards. And the, the, the name for this collecting, this type of collecting is carto cartophily. C A R T O P H I L Y. So that's the sort of other really good keyword to use when you're searching. So yeah, I would say tobacco um, and 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 cigarette, um, and then collectible. You know, all of those kinds of keywords would work. For now, sure. one of the questions that's coming in from the hecklers is again from Katie. It's yeah. a couple of people have been answering it. So, and I encourage that. So thank you all for keeping the chat uh, full, but just putting this out there uh, for those not following the chat is asking if there are reproductions. Mm. Now, when I did the research that talked a little bit about the idea of them stopping around World War, II, World War II, and in some cases they reissued some old series, it sounded like they were marking on there that there was some yeah. level of a reissue or there was mm. some way differentiating them so they weren't they weren't trying to fake you know or trying to confuse the market but in mm -hmm. general do you find particularly it's the ones that are going for the 20 30 bucks a piece do you mm -hmm. find reproductions out there fakes out there were they done in contemporary times that we're going to find tons of them well what i've heard what i've heard is that the more expensive cards like i'm not talking the 30 40 i'm talking the ones that are you know thousands of dollars those typically are the ones that are reproduced like you know most collectibles it's those ones that are super super valuable that they try to you know for forge right so um but i haven't seen a lot of reproductions at at this end of the, the scale where you're talking you know 30 dollars or less i don't think they'd bother to <laughs> to reproduce but good point you know, if you were if you were buying something you know if you were gonna buy that three million dollar card i think you'd want to be getting authenticity checks for sure on that wouldn't you <laughs> another question that's coming in was asking about how to date the cards and i do not have a trick for that um, what I was trying to do is literally just either doing through a Google search. There's a lot of, there are a lot of card collecting societies out there or groups out there. Some of them are reselling, others just having information. But what I would find is I'm like, oh, this is a great site. And then I try and find my series, then I didn't have it. You know, and then I'd go someplace else and they'd have that series, but they didn't mm -hmm. have something else. So I couldn't find any like one true place to find. And other than the one that had the coupon on it, I didn't see any like obvious ways to date them. Do you, no. do you have any like tricks? Because even no. like the black and white one, I thought that was going to be my oldest one and it ended up being later by like 15 years. Yeah, no, they're, it's funny. They've got, you know, all this text on them and, and they don't have a date. You know, it's so funny that I've, I thought the exact same thing. And the silks are even worse because 
they don't have anything except, you know, maybe a little title and maybe a number. So, you know, they're really, really hard to date. But yeah, you've got to do, as you say, there's a lot of trading card companies and uh, that have, you know, uh, may have your series. The other thing that I found is if I, like when I first bought all these Imperial tobacco ones, I Google searched um, Imperial Tobacco Company History so that I would understand the history of the company. And if you understand the history of the company, you kind of can narrow it down to a certain time frame that they were probably printing cards. And they might even point. Pay, right? So I would look back at the company history um, to try to kind of get a sense of date. And then, you know, if you can find your exact series, um, then you can maybe date it. The yeah. other thing you can do, and this comes up pretty much with any sort of advertising collectible, I have this series that I pulled. It's uh, their veteran cars, and oh, the wow. cars all have dates. So obviously, they're going to be after the dates on the cars. You know, so that's somewhat obvious. But what also was on this one is at the very bottom, it gives the address of who created it. And this is one that's not a cigarette card. This is literally the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents issued these cards um so you get to get to know the highway code but as you look at the address it actually has the sw1 on the bottom so yeah i did a little digging into that and that code did not start getting used until 1917. so you know that these are after 1917 which isn't like super clarifying but uh it helps you know particularly right. in some of the later ones as additional zip codes and postal codes got used you suddenly know well it can't be before the 1956 because that was when they did one of the changes right. so like little tips like that those you can use for any sort of advertising pieces uh mm -hmm. definitely use that um you can also sometimes tell like we were talking about the uh, famous actors ones these i just wanted to show because these were the collections these are the only ones that I have in uh, any of the cards that I got that are other countries. So the Clark Gable one is, mm -hmm. there's a date that somebody wrote on it uh, that I bought it from. They're saying that's 1938. Gone with the Wind was 1939. So that's looking like Rhett Butler. So sometimes yeah. you can date them from things like that. So that's Carreras, so that was a British company. But then this one is Jeanette McDonald. Oh, uh, neat. Her handbag. And this one is Bulgaria. Ah. So this is the only uh, Bulgaria of um, Bulgaria sport, but the address says Dresden. So mm. I think it's a German company, but it's a Bulgarian issue. Uh, another Gallagher one. And then I have like, two others. Uh, this Most of these people, I, well, here's another Jan Jeanette McDonald one, or Janet wow. McDonald one. So I don't know why she was so popular, but mm. this is another German one that you've mm -hmm. got the Dresden. Uh, Germany. Um, oh. And, you know, that ends up becoming a case, you know, Dresden was bombed during World War II. They weren't producing anything. Um, so, you know, it's before that. <laughs> so another Salem card, but also from Dresden. So I have a handful, like those couple German ones, but almost all that I have are British. Um, and, uh, but sometimes, so you can tell some from the imagery, you might mm -hmm. be able to date um, as you go through that. The other the other cards that I have that are kind of neat are these candy cards. I saw somebody in the chat mentioning candy cards. And what's neat about these is you can tell if you look kind of closely that somebody's cut this out. So I'm assuming it was part of the actual box and they had to, you know, cut it out of the box. Oops, that's upside down. But you can kind of tell a little bit that, you know, as you go through these that uh you know some little hand probably has cut them out but they're a nice size again they're you know a bit more substantial mm -hmm. not these the little ones right and the, but look at these graphics i mean oh my god just love these graphics and what's neat too is it says on the back so it says mackerel is a famous commercial fish of the atlantic taken usually in gill nets and traps but when trolled for with light sea tackle, it gives wonderful sport because it's of its speed, which is indicated in the powerful fins and tail. But then what it says is it says free, mail us a complete set of coupons from one to 24, and we'll send you a picture of a four, 14 by 12, 25 inches tinned top and bottom for hanging on the wall, showing this 
series of Canadian fish. So the idea was is they they collect these cards too and trade up for bigger ones. And that was also very common with the silks. They would collect up the little silks and trade them in for a big piece, a really big piece. I don't have any of the big pieces, but I'd love to get some of the bigger ones too. Yeah, that's because fantastic. I didn't realize you could do that. Now, something similar to that is some of the cards will say on them. And here's, I've got, I hate to keep showing the same cards, but it's the ones I basically cut my teeth on. If you look right. at the very bottom, it says mm -hmm. albums for this series are available for a penny. And <laughs> I was wondering, I'm like, well, wonder what it is. So I did another, you know, went some, did some Googling and I found the paper albums that were designed to hold these series. I ordered some, unfortunately they didn't come in time for the deep dive, but if I, once I get them, I'll post them on Instagram. Have you ever come across any of the albums? No, as I said, the, well, the closest is that the um, silks, when I bought them, they were in, you know, a binder like, okay. like this. So they're uh, like little paperboard folders and yeah. they're punched with the four corners so you could slide it in and then you could still read the back. And okay. so some of them are blank on the front that just said like John Players and Sons and you wrote in the series name. Others Maybe. were actually printed with the series information in them. So I can't remember which ones I bought. I bought two empties and I bought one that was filled uh, just because I thought the concept was cool. Like I wouldn't want yeah. them, but I think they're gonna be super fragile. So I'm very happy with my my plastic sleeves. But the idea that that's what these that they would do, you know, you how long would it take you? You said you had one series that had a hundred cigarettes in it or a hundred cards in it. How many cigarettes do you have to smoke in order to get all one hundred? Because you know you're gonna get ten of one of the cards and you need to like trade them with your friends or whatever. Like right. those little paperboard albums would be, you know, serious, you know, uh, to keep track, saying which yeah. ones do I actually need. So I, I wish I had those for the deep dive, but unfortunately I do not. Uh, we're, I want to be, you know, sensitive to our time. We mm -hmm. did touch a little bit about the values as you change from the cigarette cards. And then I think the T cards are probably from my research and my own experience. Those seem to be the most prevalent. Um, Brooke Bond did a lot, but there are a lot of T companies that it, just like the little Wade Whimsies that I've been selling, like they get, they went into T. It was a thing. Yeah. What's the most unique company you've had that have issued some sort of a trade card? Hmm. Most unique. Um, I'll start with mine while you think about it. So yeah, I've got okay. um, a couple. So one of them, and this is, again, I picked this up again, another cool little sleeve. I picked this up specifically because of its subject matter. It is a six card collection and these are quite a bit larger. These are probably like three by four. Um, so these are quite a bit larger. It is a six card series that talks about the manufacturing of porcelain. So it's actually how porcelain is made and it has been issued by a margarine company. So Mucklenburgish oh. Margarine Fabrik. Uh, I think we've got Diana, she could probably pronounce it better. Um, but it is actually basically a margarine making company that they issued these uh, with their butter or with their margarine. So that I found was kind of an odd combination. Like why would a butter company be caring about porcelain? And then the other one was this collection of world locomotives. I've still got the little sleeve that it came in. It's these world, put it right side up, world locomotives. This one was done by Morn Flake Quick Cooking Oats. Oh. I did some searching. So this again, going into the question of uh, age, I had to find when was Morn Flake, Morn Flake Oats, when was it made and when was it produced? And it was only made for about five years. So this was an early fifties um, mm. set. So like sometimes just looking for things like that on who issued them, it was promoting the oats, but they only promoted it for a short period of time. So you kind of know that these must have existed during a very short window. I heard the timer, but let me show you a couple quick then, because this, I guess, series is another one that I think is really neat. Um, and I've got this priced at like $7 a card or 10 for $52.50, just to give you a sense of cost. Um, this one's kind of in rough shape, but what it is, is it's chocolate cards and it's the, they call it the Indian series. Um, so what it is, is it's awfully stereotypical, unfortunately now for this day and age. Um, but uh, 
uh, First Nations or Native Indian um, depictions. And these are super valuable because I think like everything that's kind of racially toned, um, you know, things like that now are becoming really popular because it shows sort of a, a negative in a way, part of our history of how we did stereotype. Um, but uh, just find it quite fascinating. And then I think my most valuable cards that I have, um, this is a set of cards and this is uh, cow and uh, candy. So these are all candy uh, cards, but these ones um, for the set of, what is it, 50, I think? Oh, 24 in the set, 250 bucks. So, but they're just stunning. They've got a gold, I don't know if you can see that, they've got a gold edge to them and it's a set of cats. So really, really neat. Um, and different because of that sort of gold edge, right? And they're cats, so those would definitely be popular. Yeah, exactly. Just because of the fact that they're cats, I think, right? That that makes them kind of popular too. So, so yeah. we're coming up on the top of the hour. I've got one more question and then sure. um, do a little bit of a wrap up. So a question yeah. from a fellow Canadian for you. Um, okay. Gabrielle White is asking, and it's actually a very valid question, is where do we find these? You know, where do you, never, have you ever seen them in the wild? And I will say the closest I've been to finding them in the wild, and I don't think it really counts as a wild, is uh, some people might, if you've watched my channel, I did a visit to George the Antique Nomad uh, when right. he did an estate sale. He had some in his estate sale. And yes. so he actually gave me a little bit of a crash course on pricing based on how he resells them and he handles them fairly often. So I did find them through them. But I can't say I've ever found them. I've certainly never found them in a thrift store. I want to say I've probably seen them off and on at like true antique stores, but never at an, at a price that I would want to pick up to resell. Yeah, um, I, I think the ones for the porcelain, because I'm really just building the porcelain collections. I think all of my porcelain ones I've gotten online. Yeah, yeah. So what are you finding in Canada? Okay, so I think the um, auctions for sure, um, estate auctions spe specifically, blah, 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 specifically, um, and also if it is a thrift shop, it would be only that you know behind the case, and sometimes they do those auctions, you know the uh, what do they call it, a silent auction kind of type thing where you write in your bid. I've seen sort of things like that in the cases. Um, you know, for those, that's maybe the closest you get to them at a, a thrift shop, but definitely either um, antique malls or um, antique stores um, or those, as I said, they used to have, and maybe once COVID is over, we'll start to see them again, but the vintage themed trade show type um, flea markets and things like that often there will be a booth in those bigger markets that you know has somebody dedicated to cigarette cards or, or trading cards that are they call them they call them uh, non-sports cards too that's another really oh, good yeah that's view. definitely a term I've run across yep, yeah non-sport non -sport, so and the problem with them and finding them in the wild is because very rarely would they ever be loose so they're going to be in some sort of a sleeve or some sort of envelope or pouch, which means they're buried. You know, yeah. So unless you take the time to open the binder or take the time to flip through the little box, like with the postcards and things like that, you know, depending on who's selling them, it's, it's kind of like, in my experience, if you find a booth that has the binders are, you know, here are, here's, you know, non-sport porcelain and here's, you know, German. And if they've taken the time to label all the binders or label all the boxes with little sleeves, you're never going to find a deal because yeah. they've already done the research. They know what they're, they're they've already found the, the gold nuggets and they're priced accordingly. So what you need, you know, the, the, the pay dirt or the, the, the excitement is when you come across some that just are like laying loose well, laying loose in what, you know, in the bottom of a box, you know, a shoe box somewhere. It's there's, it's just, there's not that big of an opportunity, but I find that I have fun just, you know, Googling on both Etsy and eBay uh, and, you know, eBay, a lot of them are British. So then, you know, you can go to the British UK, uh, British eBay. Um, they have so many variety and the prices are all over the place. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. you get a good deal if you buy sets. Sometimes you get a really good deal if you buy lots. 
Uh, but then you end up with all kinds of you know loose ones. And so that's what I wanted to finish up with because as anyone who's seen my deep dives in the past, we don't sell, this is not a mm -hmm. sale, but yeah. both uh, Joni and I are resellers. Yeah. Um, I wanted to wait until this deep dive to make sure any, Joni had any like hidden nuggets that I needed to know about. But I will say in my case, I will probably start offering some of these in uh, some of my live sales. Um, what I want to do is I think this is a fun entry level, you know, field to get into collecting. So yeah. for those who've seen my live sales, I'll trust these bargain bin and I'll put like maybe two or three into a $2 purchase. Some of them aren't the best of condition. Sometimes the ink from the back mm -hmm. one went on the front of the next one, but you know, you can start a collection, you can still see it. So I might put a few small ones in there that are, you know, just get them out for cheap. So you can yeah. start a collection and then I'll probably be selling my non porcelain partial collections. Mm -hmm. You know, that's going to be getting into the dollar per card, $2 per card. I don't think, I, I don't think I've got anything more than probably like seven or $8 a card on like Joni. So what are your plans for yours? Are you going more online? I know you do live sales. What are your plans? Yeah. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to put um, two, two um, a series a week onto Instagram just the pictures and I'm going to sell them if they're a set then a fixed price for that set if it's a if they're not a complete set then I'll sell them individually and I'll have an individual cost price and then a price for 10 lots of 10 um, and so that you know then you can go to Instagram you can see the picture you can kind of decide which ones you want and then on my live sale I'm going to do a giveaway for um, I've got just these little little packets. There's not much in them, but but you know, just a, a little giveaway at my next live sale on Tuesday. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for for these cards is to just try to do them through Instagram. Well, give it an. Ex I'm just going to experiment because I haven't done much selling on its Instagram. So. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully everyone enjoyed the uh, enjoy the deep dive tonight. And maybe we did inspire. I had the comment come in from Jean that you're inspiring new collectors. Oh, and that's yeah. what really warms my heart for doing some of these deep dives. I've heard it multiple times. I will say the very first deep dive I ever had, my guest was Katie from Vintage and Vinyl. Uh, she did my very first deep dive and her topic was something that I didn't even know existed. It oh. was typewriter ribbon tins. And right. I now have a typewriter ribbon tin in my own personal collection because I suddenly got to see, well, what, what are these? I now come across them. And even, you know, I've had deep dives of subjects that I wanted to learn about, but I have zero interest in collecting or reselling. But then when I'm out in the, you know, you're out in the wild, all of a sudden I'll see something like, yep, yep, I remember that. They talked about that, Mark. I know what that means. And that's kind of fun. Like, you know, Golden Books, you know, golden I did a books, yeah. lot of popular ones. So really appreciate join Joni. I really appreciate you joining me. Uh, really appreciate everyone who joined in with the chat. So I always welcome our, my Huckster hecklers. Uh, so thank you so much for joining in for this evening. Uh, last year I was doing, in 2020, I was pretty much doing uh, two deep dives a month. Uh, to be perfectly honest, it became very difficult to schedule them. And then when people needed to reschedule things, it got really you know dicey because I was scheduling three months out. So this year I'm being a little bit more loosey goosey. And that's why this was the first one I did. Uh, so I got a little lazy. So I'm not exactly sure what the next one is going to be or when the next one will be. I know the upcoming topics, Tim from over the years has agreed to do one on Pyrex and uh, Jamie oh. from Mid-Century uh, Mid Wasted has agreed to do one on Paint by Numbers. Uh, cool. So I've got those two coming up. And then Cindy from Mimi's Treasure Cottage has agreed to do one on canning jars. I hope to be able to, re she was scheduled earlier in 2020, but we couldn't do it um, because of some of personal, some scheduling issues. So I'm hoping I can bring her back into the fold and get one of those scheduled. So I've got some more coming up, uh, but for right now, I just don't know when they'll be. So I appreciate Joni uh, joining me tonight and appreciate all of you joining into the chat. And uh, thank you, Brian. I hope hope it was educational for everybody and hope you all had fun. So thanks a lot for joining me. Thank you again to Joni and thanks for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. Everybody have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. -bye. Bye,